And I took the slides that we started with um, uh, last session. There's about 114 of them or something like that. I took those 114 slides. I deleted the uh, uh, ones we covered already for the most part, except for a few review slides here. Uh, and I broke the rest up into two groups. One group that we will definitely be going through tonight and another group that we're going to start on tonight, maybe finish up next week. Next week, we're going to cover uh, 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 instrumentation, how to measure sound. Maybe I'll even bring in a couple of devices that we can uh, play around with a little bit. Uh, but this week, we're going to go through these formulas in a lot more detail. So <clears throat> for starters, <clears throat> we had mentioned that, and before I get to that, let me, let me just cover the idea of units. Okay, first thing is, is that the, the sound reaching our ear, those alternate uh, 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 compressions and rarefications of the air reaching our ear, are, uh, we feel them in the form of a pressure on our eardrum. So really, when we're measuring sound levels reaching our ear, we're really measuring the, the amount of energy that's in those sound waves that are reaching our ear. In other words, a pressure. Okay. There's a lot of different forms, that, a lot of different units that we can use for pressure. So, for instance, in metric, in uh, English units, we use pounds per square inch. That's not going to be practical here because pounds per square inch is just a relatively giant, gross measurement compared to the levels of pressure that we're going to be dealing with. Um, instead, we're going to be dealing with metric units, typically newtons per meter squared, or dynes per centimeter squared. A dyne and a newton are both measures of force. And of course, centimeters squared and, and a meter squared are area. So, so what we're looking at here in terms of sound pressure levels are forces over unit areas. Okay, so put it into perspective. One pascal, which is a measure of pressure, is equal to one newton per meter squared. Just give it a different name which is equal to 10 microbars. A bar is, basically a bar is atmospheric pressure, one bar. So, so uh, 10 microbars is equal to 10 dynes per centimeter squared is equal to 0 0.00014 PSI. So we can see right away PSI is not gonna be very useful to us. It can be very useful when we're working with air systems. This isn't even that useful to us, right? We use inches of water instead, but we'll get to that in another course. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that up, that these are probably the units we're going to be dealing with the most. <clears throat> Pascals, most likely, microbars, and so on. <clears throat> now, our biggest problem in dealing with uh, measuring these sound levels or describing these sound levels is the minimum pressure that we can sense in our ear, that we, we, we can detect the sound in our ear, is 20 micropascals. Go back there and take a look at that. That's Pascal, that's tw 20 millions of a newton per meter squared. Okay, so that's 20 micropascals. That's the equivalent of 0 0.000, as I said, 20 micro, micro newtons per meter squared uh, is equal to 0 0.000200 microbars is equal to so many dynes per square centimeter. And take a look at PSI, it's ridiculous at this stage, PSI, it's useless, right? Now, that's great, very, very low levels that we're gonna be dealing with. But 20 micropascals, that's a pretty easy number to work with. Unfortunately, at the other end of the scale, the maximum that we uh, level that we can hear, once you get, in, once you get about uh, over 120 decibels, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about what sound pressure level that, that represents as well. Once you get above that level, uh, you get into an area where sound can actually get painful, right? And actually can uh, cause acute damage to your ear. Usually you get over 140 decibels. You're in a range where you're reading, reaching the maximum level uh, that you would sense as sound rather than pain, maybe just a little under that, okay? But, but uh, and it'd still be painful, but you would you'd still be able to recognize it as sound. But that's about the top end, about 139, 140 decibels. Okay, what is that? How, what is that in pascals? That's 178 pascals, or uh, well, uh, let's see, let me get my decimal place. 178 million micropascals. So we're going from 20 micropascals to 178 million micropascals. Well, that's kind of inconvenient to deal with, right? It's an enormous scale. So we we need a way to compress that 
into numbers that we can deal with easily on a day-to-day -day basis. When we're doing field measurements, when we're trying to uh, evaluate workplace environments and so on and so forth, that, that's why we have uh, invented this scale that we use instead of this for sound pressure levels, for power, and so on and so forth, called decibels. Okay, so let me go back here to where I was. So, so it's a very wide range that we're dealing with. So we need a way to, to uh, compress that range. Um, <clears throat> now, decibels are unitless. We're going to see why they're going to be, in other words, the pressure that we were talking about <clears throat> had units, force per unit area. But decibels themselves, they're not really just a logarithmic representation of a pressure. They're actually a logarithmic representation of a ratio of pressures. The pressure that the sound is making that you're measuring over the minimum pressure that you can that you can possibly hear that 20 micropascals so it might be a million micropascals over 20 micropascals but since they're both pascals they they uh, and it's a ratio they both cancel out so decibels actually don't have a unit they're unitless okay actually makes it a little easier to work with in some ways okay and as an aside, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is really completely true, but but most people consider one decibel as being basically the minimum difference that you can tell a difference in sound level. Okay, so let's take a look at typical sounds that you might come across and the amount of uh, uh, energy that's coming off of those. I mean decibels. In this case, we're talking about decibels. Um, a pneumatic chopper. That's a, one of those things that they. Uh, that they'll use that, like a jack, basically a jackhammer, a multi-use jackhammer, an accelerated motorcycle, we're up over the 100, 100 decibel level. Okay, and then when we get down into a normal male voice, it's about 60 decibel levels, and then a uh, quiet natural area with no wind is about 20 decibels, and so on and so forth. Well, we notice that we go from, uh, from 10 to 60, we go from basically no, you know, very low levels of sound to a normal speaking voice, right? And then when we double that, 60 to 120, we go to levels that are almost painful to listen to. So that's the nature of a logarithmic scale. The difference between 90 and 100 is much bigger than the difference between 40 and 50. Okay, and that's true of a lot of logarithmic scales. Anybody else, anybody uh, um, uh, can think of another scale that they use that you see. Uh, it's not, not the hurricane scale necessarily, but a similar one that they use for measuring uh, energy in a disaster. That's also a logarithmic scale. What's that? The, the, is, what is it called? Earthquake scale. Yeah, it's, it has a name though, right? It's, Richter. Right, Richter scale. Okay, Richter or SAP or something like that, right? It's one of those two, right? So that scale, same way. There's much more, if the difference between an earthquake of magnitude six and seven is much different than the magnitude between three and four. Okay, again, because it's a logarithmic scale, high end is, is compressed like that. So you can you can view it rather than uh, as an enormous scale, something you can you can uh, wrap your head around. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here in terms of like the levels that we might be working with. <clears throat> now, it might be three ways that we're going to look at this. Three basic ways we're going to understand this. One is the sound pressure level. That's that's our, that's our pascals. That's our microbars, right? That's the pressure of the air hitting our ear that's, uh, that we're sensing the sound, okay? That's one way that we're gonna look at how much sound is present, okay? How much noise or sound is present. The second thing we're gonna look at is the sound power level, okay? And that is, uh, how many of you guys uh, 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 have, uh, have upgraded your sound systems in your car? How many watts, do you know? The speakers they have in the car, how many watts do they have? The upgraded system. Not sure? Oh, okay. Yeah, but generally when we talk about sound power in a speaker, we're talking the amount of power that it can put out, the energy that it can put out, right? The, the work that it can do. That is measured in watts. We can also convert that into decibels also, but it's a measure of how much sound that that system can produce. Okay, so it's a nature, it's built into the nature of that device. So if you have a machine or a speaker 
that operates at 50 watts, that's giving out a certain amount of energy. That's giving out that 50 watts of energy. What, what you get at your ear, the sound pressure level you measure at the ear, could be quite different than that. In other words, it could be you could be very far away from it. It could be in a room where there's things between you and the speaker. The speaker could be pointed a different direction, right? So there's a lot of things that could influence that. But the speaker doesn't change. In other words, your perception of it changes. But the speaker is putting out 50 watts. So that's what we're talking. When we talk about sound power, right, the sound power level, we're talking about the amount of energy that that particular device puts out, okay, whether it's a, a jackhammer or a speaker. Doesn't change, right? That's something that, that's the nature of that device, okay? So what about intensity? Well, now imagine that we have, <clears throat> that we have a device, a speaker. Let's say it's a really tiny speaker, but it can get put out a lot of sound, right? I guess Bose, right? Bose or something like that. Tiny little speaker, give out a lot of sound. So it's almost like a point source, only a tiny little point source. If I suspend that in the air, if you can imagine, if I draw a bubble of one foot in diameter, right, a big sphere, one foot in diameter around that speaker, if that speaker is putting out 100 watts, right, it's a miracle. Bose is so good at this stuff, right? Say all those speakers putting out 100 watts, all directions, right, omnidirectional. Let's say that we have one in, one foot diameter sphere. As we are, as that energy is expanding into that one, when it reaches that one foot diameter sphere, right? That sphere, that energy that we're producing, 100 watts, is spread out over the entire surface of that sphere because it's going all different directions. Some of that energy is going that way, some of it's going that way, and so on and so forth. Right? So, so now, if we look at that one foot diameter sphere well that's how we can see well i'm going to carve a window in that that's like one square one 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 square centimeter and i could say oh you know i can measure i can estimate based on how far away i am from that source to that area there well, how big that area there is how much actual sound is hitting that area right that's called sound intensity okay so what if I just looked at, what if I took that one foot diameter sphere and I made it five feet in diameter? Well, now the surface now that I have that's, that that sound is going out into is much larger, it's the same amount of energy, but now it's spread out over a five foot diameter sphere, right? So, so now if I took that same one centimeter, there's much less energy, much less intensity of sound at that one little square centimeter of window that I carved in there, right? So what's happening here? As you get further away and the sphere gets bigger, you can calculate how much that energy is diluted when it reaches the surface of that sphere. Yes? Uh, oh, no, square, it's a surface, right? We're talking, if it were a, if it were a volume, like a, if it were, we're talking about the whole sphere, it would be, yeah, cubic. But we're talking to just a surface, like the surface of the bubble. By the time it gets out to the surface of that bubble, it's now diluted. Now, well, what's this formula for the surface area of a square? Anybody remember what it is? I think I have a slide that has it. Well, um, we'll get up. Oh, here we go. Okay. The uh, let's see, surface area is four pi r squared. So the sphere. The surface of that sphere, when we double the radius, we go from a radius of one to two or two to four, what happens to the surface area of that sphere? It's squared, right? So as we get further away from that source, the intensity of the sound, the intensity of the energy there is quarter, is if we double the distance, we quarter the amount of energy that's on that, that window on that sphere. Right, and we double it to 18, that's it from four to eight, it's halved again. Eight to uh, uh, 16, it's halved again, and so on and so forth. So that formula is what, what informs us about how uh, the intensity of the sound diminishes the further away that we get. That's, that's what the basis of this is, this idea of the sphere and that energy. Okay, so we got three different things we're looking at, right? 
sound. One is sound pressure levels, right? Which is the energy of the sound, the pressure again that the sound is producing when it reaches your ear. The second one is the sound power level, which is the amount of energy that's being put out by the device. And the third is the sound intensity, which is how much energy there is at that point in that, if you drew a sphere or something like that, or, or any, a half, if it's put speakers up against the wall, a half sphere, right? A semi a, 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 a hemis, hemisphere, right? So, so we're gonna take a look at that as well. Okay, are we comfortable with that, by the way? Guys, how many of you guys feel comfortable with those three descriptions? Nobody, a couple of hands, right? How many of you guys are really, that you're not that comfortable with this one? Okay, all right. <clears throat> we can go, I'm, I'm, I can go back over this again in a little bit. Let's move on for now, and then I'll go back. Okay, so, <clears throat> so now this logarithmic scale that we're gonna use to describe the first thing we talked about, sound pressure levels, pressure of the sound reaching our air. Okay, we want, we, we can measure it in terms of pascals or micropascals or microbars and so on and so forth, but we want a better scale to work with, okay? So we're gonna convert that into this scale that we call decibels, okay? So the log scale of sound pressure, at the minimum amount that we can hear is 20 micropascals, okay? So the formula that we're gonna use is that we're gonna say that if we take the ratio of the sound pressure level for the sound we're measuring, right, which might be a loud noise, divided by the minimum we can hear. So for instance, let's say the sound pressure, which is P1 up there, sound pressure I'm measuring is uh, 50,000 micropascals. And I'm gonna divide that by 20 micropascals, the minimum that we can hear. So that's 50,000 uh, into that is like 2,500. Right, just the numbers no longer got units because the pascals cancel out. Fifty thousand divided by twenty is twenty-five hundred. I think I think I'm right there. Okay, so we're going to take that number. Doesn't really help us now because it's still a big scale, big number, right? We're going to take the logarithm of that number. Okay, so we're going to take the logarithm of that number, <clears throat> and we're going to multiply it by ten. That's going to be our decibel scale. Okay, so. We're going to take, excuse me, let me, let me rephrase that. We're going to take our ratio, we're going to square it, right, 2,500 squared. We're going to take the logarithm of that, and we're going to multiply it by 10. Now, one of the things that we learned when we talked about logarithms, when we get through this problem, I'm going to review logarithms again. One of the things we learned about logarithms is, is that when you, <clears throat> when you are uh, multiplying, Two, two logarithms, right? When you multiply two numbers, you can convert them into their logarithms, and you can add the logarithms and then convert that into a real number. When you, when you create the logarithms, add them together, it's the same as multiplying the numbers. When you take a number to a certain power, like you square a number, or you, you take it to the fourth power or something like that, you, that's the same as taking the logarithm and simply go one operation lower, multiplying it by four. So in a sense, if I take 10 times the log of the ratio to two pressures squared, it, it's the same thing as simply saying 20 times the log of the ratio of the two pressures. Those two formulas are equivalent, right? That's the way logarithms work. Okay, so <clears throat> how many of you don't understand? Let me put, let me ask you, let me, let me ask this question a couple of ways. Number one, how many of you grasp that and understand what I'm talking about when I say that. Okay, how many of you don't understand it, but you can work with the formula anyway? Good, okay, good, so we can all do that at least anyway, right? So that's the important part, right? For us right now, that's the important part. So our reference level is 20 micropascals. So we're gonna take a problem. I think we actually started with this. We got, I don't know if we actually did it, but we actually kind of started with this last time. What is the sound pressure level in decibels coming from a source that generates 1.57 pascals, right at the right near the source. So I wanna convert that into, into decibels. Okay, so how do I do that? Okay, so uh, in this case, we use the first formula. Okay, if I look in the, in the inside there, um, 
1.57 pascals is the same, same thing as 1,570,000 micropascals. Another way of saying 1,570,000 micropascals is to say 1.57 times 10 to the sixth, right? That times 10 to the sixth says that I'm multiplied by a million, right? <clears throat> Divided by the minimum that we can measure, which is 20 micropascals, that we can sense 20 micropascals. And then we're gonna square that ratio. Okay, now you see why we had to do that, that multiplied by a million, right? Because we had to convert it into micropascals. Okay, so let's do that. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna take my calculator. And I'm gonna say, oops. Okay, 1.57 divided by 20 equals 0 0.078, 0 0.075. Okay, so now, before I do that, well, what is that actually? Okay, da, 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 okay. times 10 to the sixth. Which is a million. Okay, is equal to 785,000. Now I'm gonna square that. And now I'm gonna take the logarithm of that. Okay, where is it? And the logarithm is 9.789, okay? And then I'm gonna multiply that by 10. And it becomes 97, about 97.9. Okay, and that's our answer, 97.9 decibels. Okay, so what did I do there again? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna step through that again. Okay, and actually, actually what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna write in 1.7. Uh, I'm gonna multiply by 10 to the six. This is 157, 1.570. Zero, zero, let's see, how many do I need here? I need, i gonna move this over six places. I need four zeros. Okay, 1,570,000 micropascals, that's 1.57, uh, 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 1 1.57 1 pascals is 1,570,000 micropascals. Move, it, move the decimal place over six places, divided by 20 micropascals is equal to 78,500. I'm gonna square that, where is it, x squared. So that's my ratio squared. That's everything that's in this part that I'm gonna find the logarithm of. And now to find the logarithm, I actually have a, a in my scientific calculator, I have an option for finding the logarithm of a number. I click on that. Tell me the logarithm of that number is 9.79. Okay, so this this whole logarithm re, uh, resolves out to 9.79 times 10 is 97.9. Okay. Okay. Now you guys are going to do it now too. Take problem one and do it on your own. Don't look so don't look so happy about doing this. Don't look so anxious and thrilled about doing this, please. <clears throat> I can't help it. <laughs> I'm gonna open up in here. Okay. I gave you the formula in there also. So how many, have, how many of you guys have a way in front of you now to find logarithms? In other words, I have a calculator. You can use one on your phone. Okay, you have it, don't have it or have it. You have it, good, okay. If you have it on, yeah, you, if you have it on your phone, on my iPhone, for, for instance, the built-in calculator, if you hold it sideways, it turns into a scientific calculator and it has logarithms on it. If you don't have it, if you don't have it, when we solve this next, I'm going to show you a way to, matter of fact, I will, 
I'm going to ask, as you guys are working, I'm going to start to talk to you about this cable. I don't like that version of it. Yes. So in trying to understand the concept of emphasis for equation of the emphasis, the 1.57. That was a 1.57 was in Pascal. Pascal. We have to change that to micro Pascal. Right. Same thing as you Right. What is that? What is that 1.57? That that's, that's the pressure. That's the pressure of the sound that you're measuring. In other words, the sound that you're measuring is causing that much pressure against your ear drum. Okay, the 20 microfascals is the minimum pressure that your ear can sense. The, that, that's P0, the minimum pressure you can sense. The P1 that 1.57 pascals or 1,500,000 pascals, micropascals, that's the actual pressure from the sound that we're trying to measure. In other words, that we want to know how many decibels it is. So you're measuring, yeah, it's a ratio of the actual sound over the minimum sound that you can hear. Okay. Now, this chart I handed out, right? Let's say you wanted to find the logarithm of a number. Let's say, for instance, we want to know what the logarithm, say all of this stuff in the middle of your equation where the log is, resolves out to uh, uh, 10.5, uh, uh, 7.5. On this sheet, if you go, you got it kind of like it kind of swings from the front to the back. The columns are continuous front and back. If you go through this and you look up the number 7.5 on here, 7.50, it's up at the top of the first page, uh, top of the second page, 7.50. The logarithm of that is 0 0.875, right? So you can actually use this chart to get a logarithm. It's only good for three, for three digits, but that's okay. You know, good enough for government work, right? Three digits. So that's our logarithm for that number, for the number 7.5. Well, what if your number is 750, right? Well, 750 is simply 7.5 times 10 to the 2, right? 750, same thing as 7.5 times 10 to the second power. 7.5 times 100, 10 to the second power is 100, right? So you know that the logarithm of 7.5 is 7.5 is 0.875. The logarithm of 750 is the logarithm of 7 of, of 7.5 plus the logarithm of 10 to the second power, right? Because we're multiplying, right? So we add them instead. The logarithm of 10 to the second power is 2. So the logarithm of 750 is 2.875. The logarithm of 7,500 would be 3.875. The logarithm of 0.75, right, would be 7.5 times 10 to the minus 1. What would that be? Well, that would be uh, a one, one subtracted. 0.875 minus 1. So that's how we can use this chart to calculate a logarithm. So we're going to 
I mean, how many guys have done this, have gotten this prompt, that kind of done? Okay, let's give it a try. Anybody want to come up here and do it? No? All right. I, th I know that's asking too much, right? Okay. So I'm going to use the uh, <clears throat> I'm going to use the second formula because it's simpler. I don't have to square the number, right? So 20 times, okay, 20 times what? 20 times the logarithm of 1.9 pascals. So I'm working with micropascals on the bottom of that ratio, right? So it's 1,900,000. Micropascals divided by 20 micropascals. Okay, so what is that equal to? It's equal to 20 times, okay, and what is that logarithm of, and what is it? What is that equal to? Right? Because of the twos. So, so let's see, we've got 2 million. Uh, Clear. Good. Come on, clear. Come on, cooperate. One million nine hundred thousand divided by twenty is equal to ninety five thousand, right? That has unit list, has no units. I don't have to worry units because micropascals cancels micropascals. So I got 9,500, right? And then I have to find the logarithm of 9,500. 95, was it 9,500 or 95,000? 1,000, okay, yeah. Okay, now I have to find a logarithm of 95,000. Okay, so let's go back to my calculator, which is has disappeared. There it is. And now I'm going to find the logarithm of that number. So the log, what I do? I made a mistake here. I, I'm, I'm not catching what's going on. Oh, the screen went blank. Okay, good. Okay, so what does it come out to be? It comes out to be 4.98, right? That's the logarithm of <clears throat> 95,000. Uh, okay, hang on a second here. How would I use this chart to find that? Well, let me go back to the chart. Well, what's the logarithm of 95,000? Well, I need to find 9.5. 95,000 is 9.5 times 10 to the fourth. So 9.5. So we can find here 9.5. Okay, 9.5 is 0.977 times 10 to the fourth would be four plus the logarithm of 9.5 because it's 9.5 times 10 to the fourth. It's 4.978. And what do we get when I use my calculator? We got the same thing, right? Four point nine seven eight. Got the same thing. Okay. Should I do that again? Okay, <clears throat> I want to find the result of my calculation. Let me go back to my table here. Okay, the result of my cal calculation was now I have to calculate the logarithm of 95,000. Okay, if I want to use this table, I need to turn that into a number between 1 and 10. So how do I do that? I'm going to move the decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4 places, right? And and you make that one, two, three, four places, and call it instead of calling it the logarithm of ninety-five thousand, call it twenty times the logarithm of nine point nine point five zero plus the logarithm of ten to the fourth power. Okay. Okay, so it's 20 times the logarithm 9.5, which was point nine was it 997 or 979? Nine, seven, nine, seven, 
9, 7, 8 plus logarithm 10 to the fourth is 4. So that part, 20 times 4.978. Okay, so go back to my calculator. And why, why was I able to just add that 4? Because it's a logarithm, right? 9.5 times 10 to the fourth, I take a logarithm of both of them and I add them together, even though uh, uh, I add the exponent, the ten, the, I add the logarithms together to get the original number. Okay, so it's going to be 20 times, 20 times 4.98. And we wind up getting a, 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 our a number of decibels is 99.6. Okay, so that sound pressure level is the equivalent of 99.6 decibels. Okay, how how many of you got the answer right the first shot? Okay, good, excellent, excellent. How many of you didn't get a first shot, but you can see the you can see the light at the end of the tunnel? It makes some sense. How many of you that can't see the light at the end of the tunnel? Okay, so we're, we're making some progress, right? All right, so, that, so we get, that's a nice, simple example for us to start with. And we're starting to learn about logarithms. Okay, so let's move on from there. And before we move on from there, I wanna just talk a little bit more about logarithms. How is it that these we can use these logarithms? Yes. I'm sorry, how much? Uh, in the steps that I went through here, somewhere you got a different answer here. So when I when I cre when I uh, filled in this formula, did you use the first formula or the second one, the twenty or the ten? Yes. Yeah. Like so. Okay, so you had it, but you had to square the, uh, you have to square the proportion. If you calculate 1.9. 1, 1. Okay, and that's and that's because you didn't square it. Is that what happened? Yeah, I just didn't come up with it. Yeah. I didn't square it. I didn't multiply one point nine times one point nine. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, like maybe a hundred thousand or something like that. Yeah, which sounds right. Did you? Did you? Uh, did, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll we'll look we'll take a look at it later on. Okay. Maybe we'll maybe we'll take a break when we can we can look at a few of these individually. Okay, I use the second one. Why do I use the second one? Because I don't have to worry about squaring that number. It just saves me some trouble. Okay, so let's go back to, let's talk, let me, let me finish talking about logarithms because I want to make sure, because we're going to be working with logarithms quite a bit in noise and in radiation because we're in both cases we're talking about things where the scales can be very large, especially in noise, it's going to be constant, right? Okay, so let's talk about logarithms. First of all, number one, um, how do I use logarithms? Here. Okay. So when I use a lot, when I create a logarithm, what I'm doing is I am taking a number. I'm going to start with a nice round number like a hundred, and another nice round number like a thousand. Right. And let's say that I want to multiply those two numbers. Right. If I multiply 100 times 1,000, it makes sense. We got 100,000. Right? Not that hard. Right. So let's look at this another way. Another way I could look at this is that 100 is 10 to the 2 times 1,000, which is 10 to the 3. Oops. Let me see if I can't. Uh oh. This is 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 3. Okay, so if I want to resolve that, that's going to be 10 to the what? 
fifth, right? We add the exponents. When we multiply the same base, we add the exponents. So what is a logarithm? A logarithm, a log to the base 10, you may notice that on your calculator, it has two logarithms. It has a natural log and has log to the base 10. A logarithm to the base 10, all the numbers are represented as powers of 10. So in other words, 10 to the two is uh, the logarithm of 10 to the two is just simply the number two. It's the number that you, uh, that you need to take 10 to in order to get the original number. So 100 is, uh, uh, the logarithm of 100 is two because uh, in order to get back to 100, you gotta take 10 to the second power. 10 to the three, uh, so logarithm of 10 to, uh, of 1,000 is three. Because why is that? Because you have to take 10 to the third power to get back to 1,000. So why is this, why is this a, any use to us at all? Well, because it's a lot easier to, let's say that these numbers are 193 and 1,112, right? It's a lot easier to, instead of adding, instead of multiplying these numbers out, operation of multiplying these numbers out, it would be a lot easier if we could simply add them instead. And that's what our logarithm does for us. This number 193, it's between 10 to the two and 10 to the three, it's between 100 and 1,000. So what we need to know is what number, what exponent represents 100, 10 to the, what exponent represents 193? And if we go to our table here and look up 1.1.93, it will give us that exponent. Okay, so uh, uh, let's, or another way I could do this is just go simply online. I think I gave you this. Uh, Okay, here's, here's, an, here's a uh, log calculator, calculator itself. And what did I say, 193? So the logarithm of 193, yep, come on, let me type in there. The logarithm of 193, oops, ah, it's a, I think there's what's called, what's called the reverse Polish notation. So 193. It's going to let me do the logarithm now. I have to do the I have to do the function first. Yeah, yeah. Logarithm 193 is 2.28. Okay. 193 because it's between and the two is because it's between two and three between 10 to the two and 10 to the three, and the difference that between 10 to two and 10 to the three is at 2.285. That's the logarithm, 2.285 is the logarithm for 193, 2.285. 2.285, that is 10 to the 2.285 is the same thing as 193. That, that's the exponent that you have to raise tend to to get that number. So I'm gonna do the same thing for uh, uh, 1,112. What is the logarithm for 1,112? Okay, so let me clear this. 1,112, and that is represented by 3.04, 3.046. So that's 10 to the 3.046. Well, I know 3.046. Well, I could have guessed it was gonna be over three, right? Because 100, 1,000 would be 10 to the three, right? So it's gonna be more than that, but it's not gonna be a whole lot more than that because it's only 112 more, not 900 more, which would have been closer to four, right? So that's gonna be my X, that's gonna be X one. So now what can I do with these? Now, instead of multiplying them, I can add them. So I can add 2.285 to 3.046, right? Add the two of them together, 12, 13, carry the one, three, 6.331, okay? 
that's my logarithm, which represents my five. Then I carry. Oh no, you're right. I don't carry it. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I told you I make make mistakes like that all the time. <clears throat> that's the logarithm to which I have to. <clears throat> that's the logarithm of the number, which is the answer for 193 times 1,184. One right. So now I know that 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 the, the, my logarithm, the number that I'm looking for is. Come on, come back. There we go. The number that I'm looking for is 10 to the 5.331. So now I have to turn that from a logarithm back into a real number, right? So how do I do that? Well, now I have to go backwards. I have to look, I, I, first of all, number one, I know it's going to, uh, really the part that I'm interested in is this 0.331. That gives me my digits. And the five just tells me it's five times 10 to the uh, uh, 10 to the fifth power. So it's five decimal places over. So what not, what logarithm represents, uh, what, what number is represented by a logarithm of 331? Well, I'm going to use my log table backwards. This is called finding the anti-log. So what was it? What, what did I say once again? Uh, 331. Okay. So 331. Okay. So let's find 331. Okay, three, three, one looks like 2.14. Okay, so now I need, and now my answer is going to be 2.14 times 10 to the fifth power. Or in other words, 200,000, 214,000. Now that's around, I, you know, a lot of times when you use logarithms, you wind up rounding, you know, losing digits and so on and so forth. Because it's not intended to, uh, what I said it was, two, two was 2.14. And then I'm gonna move the decimal place over five places. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five places. So yeah, it's 214,000. If you actually multiply it out, that's probably pretty close. But what we were able to do there is we're able to take a com more complicated calculation. And you know, I, this is not a great example of why you might really want to use logarithms, but trust me, there are many calculations where they really give you a lot of power. Okay, so, so instead of having to multiply two numbers, we're able to add the exponents for those two numbers uh, in order to get a, uh, a, the exponent to, to the base 10 of the answer to that multiplication and then turn that back into a logarithm. Well, this has a lot of applications. One of the applications that it has, you don't see so much anymore. Let's say that I were to take a ruler. Let's say I were, I were to take two rulers. Here's a ruler. A one, two, three inches, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 inch, 10 inch ruler, right? Let's say I would take this second ruler, right? I'm gonna put this second ruler over here. And similarly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You know something, let's take a look at that. If I wanted to add together six, uh, if I wanted to add together three and any of the numbers down here, I could just say three and four. Oops. Let's see. Oh, I should have started with zero. Zero, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so three and zero is three. Three and one is four. Three and three and three is six. Three and by sliding these two rules, rulers together, I can use it as an adding machine, right? Well, we can also, instead of using a ruler that's linear like that, we could create a ruler where zero, where one is over here, right? And two is over here, 
and three is over here, and four is over here, five is over, and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And the distances don't represent the numbers themselves. The distances represent the logarithms of the numbers themselves. So I could take two of these logarithmic rulers and use them to add logarithms and then come back and change that back into a real number. You guys ever seen a slide rule? How many of you guys have ever seen a slide rule? Okay. One person, where'd you see a slide rule? I, I expected that people with white hair to be telling me they saw a slide rule. Where, where have you seen a slide rule? Did you see one, somebody using it or in a movie or something like that? Okay, okay let me uh, show you a slide rule. Now this is this is a, this is the link is on Blackboard. This is a virtual slide room. Let's see if this one works. Okay, there we go. That's a slide room. And notice. The distance between one and two is really big. Uh, two and three is smaller, four. So the, this, the distances here on these two scales, see these scales mark C and D here. The distances are exactly the same scale, but they're logarithms, okay? But the distances represent logarithms. So what I can do is I can use them, use the distances in order to do uh, multiplications. So let's say, for instance, I take this, this scale, this C scale, and I move it over to two. Actually, let me, move it up. let me reduce it a little bit so I can work with it easier. I'm gonna move it over to three. Oops. I'm gonna put that one right on top of the three. Okay. So now if I go across, that's the one's right on top of three. If I go across the two, and come down, what is three times two? It's six. What is three times, what is three times three? It's nine. <clears throat> well, now what if I want to deal with a more complicated number? Like for instance, what is, uh, anybody remember the two numbers I was working with before, 190 something? 193. Okay, so let's see, where's 193? So one, and then nine, and then three. Right, so one, nine, three, it's under 200, one, nine, three, so I gotta find 193. And I was multiplying it by 1,112, and my answer comes out to be two, looks like two, uh, that's one, two, one, two, one, three, looks like roughly. I can go across here with any of the numbers, 213 comes out, to come, gives me like three digits, but I have to keep track of the, the decimal places myself. So as it turns out, I think it was 216,000 or something like that. So, so you can use this device to actually do, then we used to use this to do actual calculations. So I'm gonna pass one around so you can play with it. So, right, what's that? Uh, I'm sorry, guys, you got to speak up. Could you? No, you don't have to do this. This is just fun. <laughs> this is fun. This is some fun. Can we uh, go back to the <laughs> That's the same slide for what's up there. Okay, let's go back to the previous slide. Okay, what was the question? Not the slide, but the most accurate for the last question. Oh, I, I think I, I didn't mean to close it, but there it is. Yeah. That? The uh, Oh, I know what you mean. Okay. Oh, uh, no, I closed that window. I think I don't want that. Okay. I'll, I'll, we'll, we're we're going to be doing some more examples, so it'll it'll come up again. Okay. Let's go back to this. Okay, 
Okay, so now we started talking about sound intensity. And here is an example of that bubble of sound, that sphere that as we get further and further away from the source, the sound is the energy is diluted because the surface area, it's being, it's, it's being spread out. So if, if it's in close, you got a small sphere like that big around the sound source, then that whole area has much more energies across that surface. As you expand it, that surface gets very large, you only have the same amount of energy. So it's gonna be diluted on that sphere. So that is our sound intensity, how much per square inch, uh, square centimeter of that sphere. But the important thing is not so much how much energy is in there, but take a look at what happens as we increase the distance. The sphere itself, the, the, air, the surface area of the sphere is equal to four times pi times the radius of the sphere squared. So as we double the radius, right, the surface area of the sphere is multiplied by four. If we triple the, the uh, 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 radius, the surface area is multiplied by nine because we square, we square the, 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 the uh, the uh, uh, surface area every time we double the uh, distance, which means that we're diluting that energy, which means that, the, at, that, at, that at the point of that surface, the amount of energy that we're dealing with, the sound, pre the sound intensity level uh, at any point on that sphere is the inverse of that. If we double the, uh, the radius, it's double the distance, then it's one quarter the intensity. If we triple it, it's one ninth the intensity because it's being spread out among the whole, over the whole sphere. Okay, sound power level. <clears throat> uh, can't be measured directly because it's a, it's a, we're not measuring you know, a, a speaker. Very difficult for us to measure a speaker because the sound, this, the uh, energy that a spe speaker generates, except that we know how much energy we're putting into it, how much electric we're putting into it. But it's otherwise difficult for us to measure exactly what that is because it's going all different directions there's other influences and so on and so forth but it stays constant it's whatever that is that that it, that thing is putting energy out at okay so <clears throat> okay so if we want to if we, uh, uh let me just okay, so let's say that we have a, a device that's producing one watt of sound power. That's how much energy it's putting out. Okay. Calculate the sound power level of large shipping hammer, one, uh, 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 one watt of sound power. In other words, tell me what one watt of sound power is represented in decibels. And we're gonna calculate that here. So the formula we're gonna use is the sound power level is equal to 10, times the wattage, the energy, the, how much energy is coming off that device over 10 to the minus 12 watts. Again, the minimum amount of energy that we can sense. So we're, we're, uh, uh, our sound power level for that device, like as if we were, if we were translating a, the power level uh, 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 from a speaker into decibels, okay, is 10, times the log of the ratio of the two powers, one watt over 10 to the minus 12 watts. Okay, so uh, one watt divided by 10 to the minus 12 watts, okay, is 10 to the 12 watts, right? 10 to the 12, no units, 10 to the 12, right? The logarithm of 10 to the 12th is what? 12, right? 10 times that is, 120. So the amount of uh, uh, the amount of sound power that's being generated by that shipper is 120 decibels. Kind of matches our chart that we were just working with before. So if we look at our uh, our um, uh, our exercises, I think we have an exercise that does exactly that. Next, calculate sound power level of a machine producing one half one half watt of sound power. Okay, so how many decibels is that produce, is that thing generated? Okay. Sound power in decibels is equal to 10 times the log of the wattage that that 
device is producing, the watts, watts of energy that that device is producing over the base watts, over our base watts, 10 to the minus 12 watts. And so what's the wattage of this? It's that one half watt. So one half watt divided by 10 to the minus 12 watts. I'll leave that up to you to calculate for a second. Again, if you have a calculator, it helps you, but you may not need a calculator. You know what I'm saying? I just checked the power settings, and this is set to never, never, never uh, turn the display off. Look up when you're done so I can get an idea of how many people are done. Okay, I want to take a quick look up. So power level is equal to 10 times the logarithm of the wattage over the reference wattage. So the wattage is 0.5 watts. So our formula becomes 10 times the logarithm of 0.5 watts divided by 10 to the minus 12 watts. To simplify this for myself, I, I moved that I changed them both into exponents. This, excuse me, this is five times 10 to the minus one. Okay, so in other words, what I did was uh, I changed that 0.5 watts into five times 10 to the minus one. And uh, uh, that is divided by 10 to the minus 12, which is really the same thing as one times 10 to the minus 12. Okay, same, I'm just changing the way it's laid out. 
Well, so what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to divide these two. So um, I can really look at it as two divisions. Five divided by one, which is five, and times 10 to the minus one divided by 10 to the minus 12. When we multiplied exponents, what did we do with them? Numbers with the same base, we added them. When we divide, what do we do? We subtract them. So what is that equal to? That's equal to five times 10 to the, let's see, one, minus one uh, minus and minus 12 is to the 11, to the plus 11, right? So now that's my number that I got to find my log for. So that's going to be equal to, what is it going to be equal to? That's equal to, be equal to 10 times the logarithm of five times 10 to the 11th power. power. Okay, so let's see. What is the logarithm of five times 10 to the 11th power? Well, first of all, it's the logarithm, oh, I'm gonna put parentheses around that. Okay, so I'm gonna add these. Yep. I don't know why it does that, and it's random too. It's not like it takes the same amount of time. I'm not even sure doing that brings it back. I think it just comes back on its own. Okay, so I need to get, find a logarithm of that. So it's gonna be 10 times the logarithm of five. What's the logarithm of five? Let me look it up. Okay, either play, either way. Point seven zero. Okay, let's use point seven zero. Point seven zero is the logarithm of, of uh, uh, am I doing this right? 10 times 0.79, point, uh, point seven zero was it? Point seven, right? Plus the logarithm of 10 to the minus 12, which uh, we got 10 to the plus 11th, which is 11. So it's equal to 10 times 11.7, or in other words, 117 decibels. We got that right? Yes, sir. You agree with me, guys? Okay, not that hard, right? A little bit confusing, this whole idea, the whole idea of what is power level, right? And kind of what, is, uh, 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 what is power level? What is uh, uh, our uh, uh, sound pressure level? What is our power level? What is the intensity? The idea of those things can be a little confusing. Oops, oh, sure. Okay, okay. By the way, I'm recording all this. So I'll, within 24 hours, I'll have this posted. If you want to go back over this, um, uh, you, all you have to do is play it back. Okay, it turns out to be 117 decibels, roughly. Okay. Later on, I'll check this. You know, next time I go around, I'll check to see if that's really the right answer. Okay, so now let's move on with, the, uh, with our slides. Okay, I just want to see what the next example is. Sound pressure level. Distance. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? Let's take five. Five. Don't take too long because I want to get through this quickly. All right? I, I don't want to spend the next six months on sound. We have other stuff to cover this semester. Yes. So the logarithm, logarithm, logarithm is 1.6 to 1. Logarithm of 500 is 2.6 to 2. Now I know that guy sort of has seen a slide before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got a little snow on the top, you've seen the slide. Okay. 
Let's give it a try. Yep. Got his, got his, got his screen. Uh, hang on to the calculator for a sec. I might be, might be your, uh, uh, you know, you saw how confused I got with the calculator. Because the calculator used something, I think it's reverse Polish notation. It does, it does this weird stuff where you got to put the formula in in a certain way. Come on, clear. I don't know why. Okay, so. Uh, that, that's 1.9 times 10 to the sixth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 1, 1, 1,900,000. Mm -hmm. okay. Divided by 20. Mm -hmm. Equals that. Okay, the, no, square. Okay, you square that. Square that, right. Okay. Square. Take the logarithm of that. And it's nine point, and then and then times ten is ninety nine point six, which is what we got, wasn't it? No, I thought it was ninety nine. Let me get ninety nine. Hang on a second. Let me do it the other way. Clear, 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 clear. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. Okay. One nine oh 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 okay divided by twenty equals this uh, and I didn't square it right just took the logarithm times twenty not times ten times twenty when I multiply by twenty I get the same answer. <laughs> So you were multiplying by 10. That's where you got that. So if you don't square it, you got to multiply by 20. Uh, excuse me, if you don't square, if you do square it, you multiply by 10. If you don't square it, you multiply by 20. Right? So when you did it here, you only multiplied by 10. Then you got 49. Yeah, this one's a little confusing, right? Well, because it's a division, you, know, you know, you're a negative number. Because of the division, when you divide by 10 to the minus 12, uh, it comes up to the top, it comes up to plus 10 to the 12, right? And, you, and, and that's 5 times 10 to the minus 10, to minus 1, right? Move that over the other way, it's 5 times 10 to the minus 1 <laughs> divided by 10 to the minus 12, right? So. 0.5 over 1. I might actually be 5 over 1 is 5. And that, let's see, what I did was I broke this up, make it easy. In other words, 0.5 right, divided by 10 to the minus 12. Right? I took that and changed it into 5 times 10 to the minus 1. Right? Same thing. Move it over that way. It's 5 to the minus 1. This is 0.5. Divided by, this is the same thing as one times one to the minus one. Okay, so I just took this part first and said five times 10 to the minus one divided by 10 to the minus 12. In this case, when you're dividing, instead of adding the exponents, you subtract them. So minus one minus minus 12 becomes minus one plus 12 becomes 11. So this is 5 times 10 to the 11. Okay. And then you take the logarithm of it. And whatever the log, I forget what the log was here, 117. Okay. Right? One, uh, uh, 0 0.117 times 10 to, uh, and 10 to the 11 become, becomes 11. What, excuse me. 117. And 10 to the 11 becomes 11. You add it and you add 11 to it instead. So this is the logarithm. Logarithm of this is 0.117. The logarithm of this is 11. 10 to the 11 logarithm is 11. And instead of multiplying, since you change them with the logarithm, you add it. The logarithm is this. Yep. 11. The logarithm of 10 to the it's 11. Yeah. The logarithm is the number, uh, the number, the power to which you have to send yeah, 10. Yes, the number. Yeah. 
right? So the logarithm of 10 to the 11 is 11. So now, since you, you were multiplying these two numbers, since you're taking your logarithms, you only have to add the exponents, right? So it becomes 11.117. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's see. This is the answer. Yeah, we're the hundred of this. Eleven. Oh, ten times. Oh, you times that by ten. Yeah, times ten. That makes sense. Confusing, right? Nah, no, it makes sense now. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, let's get back to work. I want to get. I want to get through this stuff. Okay. Okay, sound intensity. That's the third thing we were talking about. The idea of this bubble uh, emanating from the uh, from the uh, sound source and the intensity of that that energy being dissipated because it's go it's filling the space, right? Filling more and more space. Okay, so this is the formula for determining what the intensity is relative to the sound pressure. I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Okay. So so the really the thing I, that that brings us to the thing that really that that impacts is this in, inverse square relationship. This idea that the amount of energy that we're getting from this sound is the in, uh, the amount of energy is is the inverse square of the distance as you increase it from the uh, uh, source. Let me see if it comes on by itself. See what I'm saying? It's not me. Just just blanks out and comes back all by itself. Okay, so uh, 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 so if we if we have a certain intensity, uh, 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 we if we if we start with a certain intensity, then the new intensity uh, uh, is determined by the inverse square of the ratio of the two distances. And we're, we'll give this a try in a second. Okay, so for instance, uh, let's see, uh, in uh, sound pressure level, they, this is the intensity level uh, uh, of the ver some various different uh, 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 noises that you might hear, uh, and uh, uh, how the intensity, uh, intensity, the ratio of intensity relates to the uh, pressure ratio. Don't worry about that for now. Okay, sound intensity of a vacuum cleaner is one times 10 to the minus fourth watts per meter square at one meter. What is the intensity? I mean, I'm gonna change that. Just so we can get through this today. Oops, let me back up to this. Uh, what is the intensity at 3.5 meters? At three point, I'm gonna change that to four meters, right? Uh, what is this in decibels? Okay. So the two intensity, let's see. Uh, uh, what is the intensity at four meters? So uh, the intensity two uh, is the one we're looking for. The intensity at the start is at one meter is one times 10 to the fourth watts per meter squared. Okay, notice that's watts, not watts, which is sound power, but this is now watts per meter squared. That's surface, that area um, uh, 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 is equal to one meter over four meters squared. Okay, so one meter over four meters is one quarter. Uh, you square it and it's one sixteenth. So I2 is one sixteenth of the starting wattage, starting uh, sound intensity, right? So, so uh, uh, I'm not gonna bother uh, uh, doing this again in decibels, but that, that's, how, that, that's how we can see that uh, 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 the distance is impacting the intensity of the sound. Okay, so in real life, what are we going to use this for? We're going to use this for, for calculating how distance affects the, uh, uh, the uh, level of noise that we're uh, uh, dealing with. So in other words, if we have a noise source, it's, it would be valuable for us to know how, for, how far away a worker has to be in order to reduce the level of noise to a tolerable level, say below the permissible exposure limit. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So we have a formula, sound, sound pressure level two is equal to sound pressure level one, the starting sound pressure level, times 20 times the logarithm 
of the ratio of the two distances. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So in other words, here's the sound source. If one meter away, we measure 90 decibels. Uh, if we go two meters away, we then measure 84 decibels. If we go four meters away, we measure 78 decibels. Well, that's interesting. Every time I double the distance, how many decibels did I go down? Six. So what does that tell you about the end, the, the, that, that, this, decibel, this decibel scale, right? It tells you that, gee, the sound pressure level is, is uh, doubled, every, is halved, it is, uh, is halved every, uh, or quartered rather, every time we move, uh, we double the distance from the sound source. Okay, so that's interesting. It's gonna be valuable to us in a little while. Okay, so now in the real world, we're never dealing with a point source. There's always reverberation, absorption, and so on and so forth, reflected sound, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if sound pressure level at 12 feet from a metal stamping machine is 104 decibels, what is the sound pressure level at four feet from the a machine? Sound pressure level at 12 feet uh, is 104 decibels. What's the sound pressure level gonna be at four feet? Is it gonna be high, uh, uh, higher in decibels or lower? It'll be higher, right? Because you're closer, you're closer to the sound source. Okay, so let's use our formula. Okay, which is uh, uh, our initial sound pressure level, uh, our initial sound pressure level is 104 decibels plus 20 times the logarithm of the ratio of the two distances. So the two distances are 12 feet and four feet. So that comes out to three, right? What's the logarithm of three? Let me look that up for me. Point, point, point 0.48, point 0.4, I'm sorry? Point 0.4, okay, let's call it point 0.48. Point 0.48 times 20. Point 0.48 times 20 is how much? 9.5, Nine, let's call it 9.5. So we have 104 decibels of original sound since we got closer to the machine, that's our ratio, 12 over four. We got closer to the machine, we add our 9.4, whatever it was, to our 104. So our new sound level, sound pressure level, is 113.5 decibels. In other words, we just, we just, we just calculated that <clears throat> if at this distance from this machine, we're measuring 104 decibels. If I plant a worker uh, 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 four, instead of 12 feet away, four feet away, he's gonna be exposed to 113 decibels. Now, usually you're looking at increasing the distance rather than decreasing it, okay? Okay, sound, uh, uh, okay. So let's go back to our calculation sheet. Okay, problem number three. If the sound pressure level at 12 feet from a printing press is 112 decibels, what is the sound pressure level at 24 feet from the machine? double the distance, or again, we'll do it again, 16 feet. Okay, so I'm increasing the distance. So the sound pressure level at 12 feet away from the printing press, 112 decibels. How much protection am I giving that worker if I double the distance to 24 feet? And how about if I only, if I only increase it to 16 feet? Let's start with 24 feet. Okay, so the starting distance is, starting distance was 12, right, distance one over 24, so that's one half, right, 0.5. What's the logarithm of 0.5? Now, you're gonna to go to your chart and you're gonna tell me the logarithm of five, right? Okay, so if you go to the chart, the logarithm of five, right? So what is this? Um, I'm looking at the logarithm of 0.5. Five. That's the same thing as the logarithm of five plus the logarithm of 10 to the minus one. Okay, so what's the logarithm of five? 0.69, stop there, that's good enough. 0.69 plus, well, the logarithm plus the logarithm of 10 to the minus one. What's the logarithm of 10 to the minus one? 
it's minus one. Minus one. So it's point six nine minus one. What is that equal to? Point three one. Negative point three one. Right? Okay, so let's fill out our formula now. So the sound pressure level at the new distance at uh, 24 feet. That's sound level, sound pressure level two. Is equal to sound pressure level one, which was 110 decibels, right? Uh, plus 20 times our, uh, uh, our D1 over D2, which is 20 times 0.31. Okay, and it's a minus, minus 20 times 0.31. And I know one of you guys is a stickler about uh, parentheses, so I'm gonna put them in this time. Okay, okay, so what does that turn out to be? It turns out to be 110 minus, somebody wanna tell me what 20 times 0.31 is? 6.2? Okay. So um, uh, what 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 are we at now? What's the sound pressure level at that distance? One oh three point eight. Okay, still still well above the permissible exposure, right? But now we know how much hearing protection that we have to provide. In other words, we might. And you don't have to tell me it blanked out because it does that on its own. I'm not doing. I, I can't. I'm banging on stuff over here. It has nothing to do with it coming back. It just does it on its own. Uh, so, uh, by the way, in the recording, that's not going to happen because it, uh, it, uh, uh, it's actually recording my computer, not what's on the screen. So, our sound, our, our sound pressure level was reduced. It wasn't reduced to under 90, right? It was reduced to 103. But when we start talking about ways to protect workers, one of the ways that we're going to protect workers by giving them hearing protection earplugs, earmuffs, uh, other kinds of devices to help uh, protect them from the noise that they're being exposed to. Okay? And they're going to have ratings. And the noise, those ratings are called noise reduction ratings. So when we were at 110 decibels, the earmuffs we were going to give him to protect him, or the earplugs we were going to give him to protect him, might not have had enough of a noise reduction rating to get him below 90 decibels for both a lot of permissible exposure limit, right? However, now that we've given him more distance and we're at 103 decibels, perhaps now that will be adequate protection. So these are all calculations that in real life, if you have to evaluate a noise situation, are going to be practical for you. I'm trying to like just skim over the ones I don't think you'll ever use, but I something like this is likely you're likely to use. So you guys, uh, uh, um, so that's problem number three. I did it for you, obviously. So, uh, so let's see. Okay. 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 So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold open this till I get to the get to the appropriate slide. Okay. Okay. Relationship between sound pressure level and sound power level. Remember that wattage I was talking about, that, that energy source, that, that jackhammer uh, at 100 watts, uh, at 10 watts, or that speaker at 100 watts, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, 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 let's say that we want to calculate the sound pressure level based on a known amount of energy that a device is producing. Okay, so LP is going to be our sound pressure level. That's our measurement. That we're concerned about. That's what we're that we're interested in, in measuring uh, in order to protect the worker. LW is the sound power level. That's if it's a speaker. That's 50 watt speaker or 100 watt speaker. at cranked up to 100 watts, right? R is the distance from the source in feet. Now notice we're going to English uh, uh, units here. 0.5 is a correction factor. In other words, we want to make sure that that we provide enough protection. VI is a directivity index, and CF is a correction factor for non-standard temperature and pressure. If we're on Mount Everest, or if, if we're measuring the sound at Mile High, the football is coming up, Denver, called Mile High Stadium, because it's 6,000 feet over sea level. 
the density air is less. So sound moves slower through it and sound pressure levels are affected and so on and so forth. Uh, it's dead in winter. Temperature may, be, may affect it. I mean, look at New England Patriots and the footballs and the clutch. Thanks. Uh, you, you know, I'm a Jet fan. Don't get me started on that. So, so uh, you know, so temperature and atmospheric pressure influence these uh, measurements. That's there because, not because we're likely to run into issues where that's really going to be a practical uh, consideration, but only because I, I leave it there because uh, I want us to recognize that that is a possibility that it may impact our measurements. So if you ever want, if you're ever working, you know, on measurements, you know, for uh, uh, for sound pressure level in the space shuttle, or in some bar in barometric environment where you're in a uh, when you're in a submarine or something like that, under a lot more pressure or something like that, well, maybe you got you need to consider that. Maybe that you have to take that factor into consideration. But for us, the, the one we're going to be interested in right now is just the right. We're going to ignore that and just include our correction factor. You know, just a, a safety factor and our directivity index. Okay, so what is our directivity index? Well, basically, it's it's we're judging how this sound is propagated. These are really simple looks at how the sound is propagated. Okay, so if you look at this first one, this first one is that imaginary sphere that I gave you, where the sound is a point source and it's going out in all directions equally, right? This bottom one down here, or this one over here on the bottom right, that's if the source is in the corner of the room. And if it's in the corner of the room, it's only a quarter of a hemisphere. It's only half of a hemisphere. It's only a quarter of that sphere. So more of the sound, the sound is more intense and more directional than it would be if it's radiating at the given power source. It's the same power source is radiating in all different directions. In this case, it's more directional, so it's more power coming straight forward. Okay, and then this one is if, for instance, I had a, a speaker in the middle of a wall facing out. Right, that's kind of the way that those sounds would radiate out from it. So we need to calculate that index that we're going to need to describe that how that energy is being propagated. So our directivity index is equal to 10 times the logarithm Q of Q. And what is Q? Q is a, a factor for each one of these different situations. So Q for that speaker in the middle of the wall is equal to four. Okay. So, a machine is generating sound at a power level of 110 decibels in the corner of a room. Whoops, uh, 110 decibels in the corner of a large room. What is the estimated sound pressure level at a distance of 22 feet? Okay, so here's our formula. Sound pressure level is equal to the amount of power that's being generated, right, uh, LW, minus 20 times the log of the uh, 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 was that uh, the uh, distance from the source, the radius, the distance from the source, uh, minus 0. 0.5 plus our correction factor, our, uh, excuse me, our, our uh, <laughs> I keep forgetting the uh, terminology, our directivity index. Okay, and we're going to forget about our correction factor for temperature and pressure. Okay, so let's see what we have. So sound pressure is equal to the uh, uh, power level minus 20. Uh, let me see what I, what was it? 110 decibels, 100, okay, 110 decibels. Okay, so LW is 110 decibels minus 20 times the log of the radius. This, this is in uh, 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 English units now, minus 0.5 plus the directivity index. So it's, a, it's, a, it's in a corner, correct? So let's calculate that. Directivity index is equal to 10 times the logarithm and happens to be eight to the, uh, from that chart. Okay, so the log of eight is 0.9. You look that up, it's gonna come out to be 0.9. So 10 times 0.9 is nine decibels. That's our, direct, uh, our, di our directivity index is nine decibels. Okay, so let's let's calculate all this. So 20 times the log of the distance, which I guess was 22 feet. Is that what the distance was in the problem? 22 feet, right? 
uh, 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 110 minus 20 times the log of the distance, 20, log of 22 feet, minus 0.5 plus nine decibels. Okay, well, let's see, log of 22. What is the logarithm of 22? Logarithm of 2.2 .2 times 10 to the one. In other words, it's gonna be one point something. 1.34 times 20. What's 1.34 times 20? 26.8, 26.8 uh, minus, so we got minus 26.8, minus 0.5 is minus 26, 29.3, My, plus nine decibels is minus 20.3, plus minus 20.3 plus 110 comes out to be 91.7 decibels. Okay, just, it's just, except for the logarithms, it's just simple algebra at that point. Is everybody okay with that? Let's do our own version of that, just to make sure we're all okay with that. Okay, we go back to our table there. You're invited to a practice session for Led Zeppelin tribute band. A speaker is generating sound power level at, of 120 decibels in the middle of the wall of a large room facing forward into the center of the room. What is the estimated sound pressure level at a distance of 15 feet? Are you going to be able to hear when you go home? Basically is what this is, right? Okay? So let's see what we have here. The, uh, the power of the source is 120 decibels. Minus 20 times the logarithm of the distance in standard units, which is feet, which is 15. 20 times the logarithm of 15 minus 0.5 plus di, what, what is di? Di is 10 times the logarithm of, for our, which one of these, uh, which one of these is ours? It's the one, oh, it's upside down. I have to fix that slide. Did you see it's inverse, inverted? Uh, what is it? It's a quarter, 0.25, is that what it was? Logarithm of Q is, no, it's a number. Well, it's four, right, it's four. Logarithm of four. What is the logarithm of four? <clears throat> point, point six. Okay, point six, 10 times point six is six, right? Notice it's a smaller number. Why is it a smaller number? Because instead of being more directed, like if it was at a corner, now it's spread out over a whole hemisphere, right, coming away from the wall. Okay, it's more diluted. Okay, so uh, this is 20 times point, excuse me, 20 times the, uh, uh, this is 0. 0.6. So this is, this is, uh, this is six, right? The I is six, minus 0. 0.5 is five point, plus 5.5, 20 times the log of the distance R. R was 15, what, what's the logarithm of R, of 15? What's the logarithm of 1.5? What's that? One point, one point, no, no it's gonna be point something. No, I was, oh, I'm sorry, you're, I got you, you're right. One, you, gave, you gave me the whole thing, I was just thinking you would give me 1.5. 1. 1.7, 1. did you say? What, 1.2? 1. 1. 1. Okay, so tw minus 20 times 1.2 is how much? That's not that hard. What is that, 24? Right, minus 24? Am I right? I'm right there, right? Minus 24, minus 0.5, it's minus 24.5, plus, what was the I again? Six, minus 24.5, plus six is gonna be minus 18.5. So we're gonna subtract 18.5 decibels from our 120 decibels. So that gets us down to 101.5, and a half, roughly. You guys okay with that? You agree with it? You're not, you don't agree with it? Okay, let me do it again, okay. Okay, so sound pressure level is equal to 120, right? minus 20 times the logarithm of 
1.5. I'm sorry, 15. Okay, minus 0.5 plus, I'm just going to go ahead and put the six in here, so we know calculate it again, right? Do you, uh, do you want me to calculate that di again? Okay, di is equal to 10 times the logarithm of four. And the logarithm of four, 10 times, what is the logarithm of four? Was 0.6. So it's 10 times 0.6, which is six. So that's where the six came from, right? So di, we're ignoring the, the uh, uh, environment factor, the pressure and temperature factor, plus 0.6, minus 0.5, and now I got to resolve this 20 times the log of 15, the distance 15. So what is that? Let's see. That's kind of, whoops. Okay, so, uh, uh, uh. oops, is equal to 120 minus 20 times the logarithm of 15. What's the logarithm of 15? Well, it's a logarithm of 1.5 plus a one in front of it, right? Because it's 1.5 times 10 to the plus one. So the logarithm of 1.5 plus put a one in front of it. So what's the logarithm of 1.5? 0 0.17, so it's 1.17, okay? Minus five plus six. Okay, so, oh, why is this giving me such a hard time? Oh, must be out of room there. I want one more spot, space here, LP is equal to 120 minus, what is 20 times 1.7, 1.7? 26? No, 26. 23.4. Minus five and plus six comes out to, oh, I'm sorry, that's minus 0. 0.5. Minus 0. 0.5 and plus six comes out to plus 5.5. Okay, so what is 23, minus 23 and plus 5.5? 28, I'm, oh, no, so we're subtracting. Oh, no, no, stop. Don't take it one step at a time. 23.4 and 5.5. Negative 23.4 and, and plus 5.5. It's going to be negative. How much is it going to be? 17.9. Everybody agree with that, right? No? <laughs> we all agree with that, right? And what is that going to be? It's 112.1. One hundred two point one. Excuse me. Okay, there we are. So everybody happy with that? So this means that I'll only be mildly deaf. Yes, I'll only be mildly deaf when I when I come home from this this jam session. Yes. It, it's. You know, I'll come up with I'll come up with a better explanation for the collection factor factor and, and I'll, I'll 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 review it. I'll review the, the origin of it next week when we take another look when we take another look at it. Okay, so let me let me finish up. Hey guys, let me just go quickly through these slides now. Okay, so we can get out of here. Okay, so we got through again, we got through all the examples anyway. Okay, so what's the what's the long and short of this? is that we don't add, the decimals don't add like normal amounts, right? Because they're logarithmic functions. Okay, so uh, if you have two machines that are both producing 90 decibels, right? They don't add up to 180 decibels. Obviously, that would be a big problem, wouldn't it? Okay, so we're going to, next we're going to talk about using tables in place of these formulas 
So, and also some simple formulas to, to calculate how sounds add together. In other words, if you have multiple sources of sound in the same room, how those sounds add together. Okay. And uh, we're going to do it with formulas, but we're also going to show how to do it with tables. We're going to briefly talk about octave bands. I don't think that's going to be our main topic of conversation. I got up to about within about three or four slides of where I wanted to be, but we'll cover that next time. And then we'll go into protecting workers, you know, seeing what the effect, health effects of these exposures are, seeing what kind of devices and techniques we can use to protect workers, what kind of instruments that we use to measure sound, how they work, what do they actually, what do they actually measure? They actually measure sound pressure levels or, or uh, how do they record it and so on and so forth. Okay, so good night guys. I will, like I said, I will take this recording within 24 hours, I'll post it. So if you want, and I am going to post our first assignment. Give me a day or two to get, I'm gonna get this posted first, and then I'll put the assignment up. I'll make it do more than, I'll make it do not this coming week, but the following week, so you get a little bit more time. Okay, especially it'll give us another chance to go over this next week.